Karibuni sana. It is another beautiful, 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 yet slight, somewhat chilly uh, Wednesday here in Nairobi. Uh, my name is Willis Saburu, and this is Daybreak. It's Wednesday. When it's Wednesday, we talk matters health and nutrition. And, uh, you know, it's uh, like they say, a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Yesterday, I had the privilege of watching one Wahiga Maora and uh, the two governors elect. And they were talking a lot about health and what it means and services and ETC. And towards the tail end, it always appear Felix about he thinks is the way forward in terms of health in the country. Uh, but for now, I want to talk about something that is rarely talked about because most of the times, ukiongea about weight, people talk about being overweight, being obese. Uh, yet there are people who are trying to gain weight. You know, you meet people in the gym and I say, I mean, I get a book again. I say, my will is, and it's such a, it's a struggle for, for them as well. So we want to talk about that and to help us with the discussion, allow him to introduce himself. Of course, he's, if you've been watching the show, he's not a stranger to us, but go ahead and introduce yourself. Good morning to our viewers. Willis. Yes. Abari. Muzuri sana. This is not another opaque diet. Yeah, no, no, no. Nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an opaque diet. No, no, no. Yes. Nutrition. Actually, my name is Felix mm -hmm. Okot. And Felix Okot, I'm a clinical nutritionist. I work at Mata Hostel, our main branch is in South B. But I also rotate to different branches that we have. We have the well in Karin, we have also uh, a development house, clinic in Demel development house that I go to. We have also a clinic in TRM, we have a clinic in uh, Shujamol, we have a clinic in Buruburu, uh, and the main in South B, and even in Thika. So we are all over trying to impact health to people. And my aim as a nutritionist is just tend to change people's health through nutrition and lifestyle. And this is one area that people should really adopt because before you get these lifestyle diseases, if you watch your nutrition, generally, most of these lifestyle diseases, you want to get them. Okay. Similarly, if you, watching your nutrition is either just preventing excess or insufficient of any. Because as you know, excess will lead you to overweight and uh, uh, inadequate will lead you to underweight, which both of the two have health implication. So generally, just offer people with health information that change them, and they can also still find me personally, face to face, mm. not through the camera. Face by face? Yes. All right. Uh, let's talk about uh, what we're talking about today, which is being underweight. Mm -hmm. uh, most people don't talk a lot about it. So mm -hmm. what is considered underweight? <clears throat> okay, people, people tend to confuse being thin or lean mm. and being underweight. There are those who are just lean. Mm. Let's talk about those who are in Trukana or the, some of the Masais, this nomadic uh, Community. people, communities. Mm -hmm. they, they're just thin, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and, and that is different with being underweight because being underweight is being uh, lesser than the normal BMI that you should be. And whenever you talk about weight issues, is one area that we have to mention is the BMI. The BMI factor is what determines generally w what, you are, what your weight is. And as we always say, a normal BMI is 18.5 to 24.9. And above that, uh, above 30.1, and above you are considered overweight, above 40 you are considered obese. But what happens when you are below the normal? So below 18.5 you are considered underweight. Below 18.5. Below 18.5. So if you and check- And you use the same measurement, the, the same, same way you measure your... Yes, yes. So for those who people, of, uh, those of viewers who don't know what is BMI, BMI is just body mass index, whereby the weighing scale that we normally use, you measure your weight in correlation to your height, and is now the current weight in kg over your height in meter squared will give you what is BMI. So if the range of your current weight in kg over your height in meter squared, that range falls below 18.5, and that considers you underweight. But there is also a factor whereby you are now severely underweight, where now the BMI before falls below 16. And at that point, whereby you are also considered malnourished, because at that point, you'll tend to lose so many nutrients mm -hmm. and are susceptible to infection and all that. Mm -hmm. So. Typically, when your BMI is below 18.5, mm -hmm. you're considered underweight. But you can, as we have said, you can be lean or thin, but you're not underweight, mm -hmm. so that's okay. But now when you become underweight, then you can have health implication mm -hmm. towards that. So what are some of those, um, do we start with the causes or we, we talk about the, the, the health implications? Maybe we can talk of the causes and the health implications, yeah, be yes. Because again, if um, there are people who 
Okay, let's start with some of the meats. Is it just because you're not eating right, so you become underweight? Not really, okay. not really, because uh, uh, eating is one of the factor, which is true. When you're not eating right, there is a factor in that that can lead you to underweight. I remember your body requires nutrients for normal function, but when the body gets less, then it tends to search for them inside the body. So when you get less nutrients and your body requires energy, your body will now tend to burn muscles because you remember what we always talk about calories. Mm -hmm. Calories are the amount of heat produced by food mm -hmm. to enable the different part of the body function. Mm -hmm. So when the body gets less calories, then it tends to burn the protein and that's why for energy, the main source of energy is the starch. So if you don't get enough starch again, in a normal, typical way, if you're not obese and you don't get enough starch, mm -hmm. because you see for those who are, are obese, even if they don't get enough starch, mm -hmm. their body will burn their fat for energy. Mm -hmm. But once you are lean or thin and you don't get enough starch or energy, mm -hmm. you don't have the, the fat to burn. Right. So what will happen, the body will burn your muscle for energy mm -hmm. and you'll become underweight. So when you get insufficient, yes, you can become underweight. Okay. Then apart from that, they have medical conditions. It's not only underweight. Mm -hmm. And some of the medical conditions are hormonal in nature. Mm -hmm. And one of them is what we call... Some of the hormonal we have the the, the, the uh, high insulin production mm -hmm. or insulin sensitivity, whereby when there is high in, uh, there is insulin production or irregular insulin production, right. what will happen is that not much sugar will go to your bloodstream because there is resistance of taking the, mm -hmm. the sugar to the to the to the cells. Mm -hmm. So what will happen? So much of this energy in form of glucose or sugar will be washed through your urine, right. and this happens mostly to those people who have diabetes. Mm -hmm. So when the sugar is washed out of your urine, uh, the, the body doesn't get, get enough energy. So it tends to balance the protein again for energy. Mm -hmm. And that's why there is drastic weight loss for people who are diabetic, mm -hmm. uncontrolled diabetes. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, we also have hyperthyroidism. Mm -hmm. the, thyroid hormone, the thyroid gland is closer to your neck area. Right. So it produces thyroid hormones. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it happens whereby the condition that can cause you to have a production of this thyroid hormone leading to hyperthyroidism. Now this tends to interfere with the metabolic rate or how your body uses energy or break down energy so that it breaks it now so fast and there are higher chances of getting underweight. Right. Apart from that we have psychological issues such as depression and depression can occur and you see with depression people don't tend to get to eat because you're bored, you lack that feeling of eating, appetite goes down. Mm -hmm. So depression can lead you to eating disorders or psychological issues can lead you to eating disorders. And the most common eating disorders that can lead to underweight we have uh, uh, one we call anorexia whereby people just tend to restrict their calories because they, 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 they don't like their image being big mm. so you start restricting and this can cause you to underweight mm -hmm. apart from that we have something called bulimia which is another feeding disorder whereby now you tend to have a specific time you restrict your energy let's say during the day and you have a specific time that you eat too much now to compensate so sometimes this can lead you to overweight but also due to either you can eat too much and it's not you're not reaching your sufficient calorie you can also lead, lead, uh, lose some weight. And this is also with the vomiting, mm. where someone eat, eat, but they f have ways of just losing weight whereby they vomit. And apart from that, they start having strict exercise to, 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 to burn whatever they put in. This can also lead you to underweight. Apart from that, we have diseases like cancer. Cancer and uh, cancer can also lead you to underweight due to the medication you, used for cancer and also the, the processes such as chemotherapy mm -hmm. that still interferes with exercise uh, appetite and then also increases your uh, metabolism. Mm -hmm. oh. We have immun immunocompressed like HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. if they don't get enough nutrients. Also, we have pregnant issues, mm -hmm. hormonal issues with pregnancy, such as pregnant mothers. Sometimes if they don't get enough of calories because they require calories both for the mother and the child, mm -hmm. then this can lead them to being underweight, people with heart disease and all that can also be underweight. So there's so many factors uh, that can lead one to being underweight. underweight. Irritable bowel disease syndrome, reflux disease, uh, whereby you vomit. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have irritable bowel syndrome uh, issues such as uh, ulcerative colitis where there is inflammation of your stomach lining leading to a wound or ulcer. We have the esophageal reflux disease whereby you vomit or food comes upward. That can happen. We also have issues like celiac disease whereby people are, um, they don't tend to digest 
uh, gluten in wheat so well. So that in digestive issues that can lead you to underweight and so many more. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now if, if, how does somebody now deal with this? Because like I told you, the people who think that now the remedy mm -hmm. to get back on track mm -hmm. is to now eat mm -hmm. a lot or eat fatty foods mm -hmm. like you know because mm -hmm. there are people mm -hmm. who are generally going through some of these things no, okay. Okay. What, what, what are some of the ways that first of all let's talk about the wrong ways people go about it, okay. 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 Right before i reach to the wrong ways people go about to gain weight when they are under it uh, when you've seen uh genetically uh, like factors we also have genetical factors yeah okay. children were born under it Mm. Okay, and the weight is not corrected. Mm -hmm. That is leading to something called failure to thrive. They don't now gain the height as required and all that. And now, once you see yourself underweight, and as we all say, there is difference between lean or thin and being underweight. When your BMI is low normal, below normal, that is what we should use. Then it's important if it stay that way for long and you're not adding weight and you've been feeding well the first thing is tend to determine what might be the cause because you can it might be something uh, that is fatal to your health so when you under it for long also don't assume go to hospital and then they'll tend to get to know and then most the most important thing that the doctors do or medical personnel History has to be taken. Genetics, uh, people are under it. And apart from that, uh, they tend to ask if you have any complication. And they can check now your hormonal profile. They can check your sugar. They can your, check your blood for infection. They can check, uh, um, let's say, your blood pressure and all that for either heart issues and everything, echo and all that. So once we, 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 we don't have a cause, then the only way to help you is uh, nutrition and, and, and diet change that will give enough energies. But when we have identified a condition, because the symptoms you have, the complaints you have, will tell us which part of you should we check for any complication. So if you have, then we'll also tend to, to treat that complication and also tend to give you enough calories. Now, what happens in both scenarios? The most important thing is calories. So if it is appetite issues, we tend to tell you types of food that tend to uh, uh, activate your appetite. Less sugary food, less fatty food. So it's not only fat that will get, help you gain weight. And then things like vitamins, fruits, and all that, that will tend to boost your appetite, mostly citrus fruits and all that. But in our next time, the appetite loss is so much and for a long time, then we'll prescribe for you appetizers that tend to stimulate your part of brain that is responsible for appetite for some duration until your appetite comes up. So and this is like supplements? It's in form of multivitamins. Oh, okay. and, and Yes, so a multivitamin is just a supplement yeah. because it gives you the deficiency of vitamin you lack to stabilize your general appetite and, and whatever your body wants. So it's form of that, but they have no side effects. The only side effects some have is inducing too much sleep, uh, but the side effects is very minimal of most appetizers. So it's also good uh, when you want an appetizer, you need to go to the professional to tend to tell you which is good for you because there are different type of components in this appetizer. So once we either give you appetizer or we advise you foods which will stimulate your appetite, now we check on your caloric requirement to help you gain weight because just a normal feeding of a balanced diet will not help you gain weight because yes, it can be balanced, but it is not uh, giving you the, the required amount of calories that you require. So in that moment, now we can clear. So there are calories that are required for someone to gain weight. And uh, in this manner, we say at least, uh, I will say from 30 to 40 calories of your body weight per day. Mm -hmm. So the least, let's say I am, I am, I am uh, let's say 166 centimeters and my weight is 45, automatically, if you check that with my BMI, we will be low. And if we use our calculator, let me just yes, try yes. so that we see. Okay. So I'm 166 centimeters, just a minute, I go to my calculator. Okay. Uh, so that we know, will I be under it or not? So we said, how we do uh, BMI is current weight, which is 45, right? 45 kgs mm -hmm. over the current height in meters. So I am 166 centimeters. So if in feet, normally you feet to, 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 to meters, you, you, you just multiply by 0 0.03 times uh, 
the centimeters actually mm -hmm. that you are. So if I'm 166, meaning if I square it into meters, is 1.66 times 1.66, because we said 18 meters squared. So 166 in meter is 1.6. So if you squared it's 2.75, right? Mm -hmm. So my BMI if I'm 45 kgs is 45 divided by 275. Eh? Okay. So 45 divided by 275 becomes 16.6. Mm -hmm. And we said a normal BMI should be above 18.5. So below for 18.5, I'm already considered underweight. Yes. So this at 16 is meaning is below 16, which is severe underweight at that point. Mm -hmm. So I'm already severe underweight. So if I'm to gain weight is uh, now I'll, I'll multiply uh, now, we said for you to gain weight, you need roughly 30 to 40 calories mm -hmm. of your body weight per day. Mm -hmm. So my body weight is already 45. So the least I can take is 45 times 30, which is about 1350 calories. And if you go slightly higher to 40, is roughly 1800 calories. So roughly between uh, uh, 1800 to 2000 is okay for me. Or so, what, what, sorry, sorry to cut you. What would that look like? In so, what will that look like in terms of food? Uh, I want to give example of someone taking in a normal African setup. Eh, you you take tea, a cup of tea, right? So once we get the calorie, then we divide it to carbohydrate. So 50% of it will be carbohydrate, 50% of this, I'll tell you what it looks like. Okay. Then maybe 15 to 25 or 30% is protein, then fat comes in, okay? So uh, when, when we have now known how much percentage is this, then we'll tend to say that we tend to divide it now. So let's say in the morning, a cup of tea with milk, half a, a, half, half a glass of, of milk has about 75 kilocalories, okay? 75 to 80 kilocalories, half a glass of milk. A normal tea has water and milk. Mm. So half is normally water and roughly half is milk. So mm. that is roughly 75 kilocalories. Mm. For those using sugar, a teaspoon has about uh, uh, 20 kilocalories, a teaspoon of sugar. So if you put two teaspoons, that is 40, plus 75, you are at 135. Then you take with bread, a slice of bread has about 80 kilocalories. So for you, I might give you more, maybe four slices of bread. So 80 times four is 240 plus around 135. That is around roughly 300 okay. Eh, kilocalories, okay? Mm -hmm. Then maybe we can spread maybe blue band or butter, or we can do uh, either, either things like peanut butter, mm -hmm. which is also roughly 45 kilocalories. Mm -hmm. So if you put like two teaspoons, that is 90. No, are we adding something? What are you adding? No. We, oh, oh, you want to add? We see. No, it so, like. okay, so let's go to where we are so far. Okay, so where we are. Other than Maziwa, 70? Maziwa will be 75. Five, uh -huh. Right? Then two teaspoons sugar mm -hmm. will be 40. 40. Uh -huh. So 75 plus 40, where are we? In. Uh, that is, yes. Mm -hmm. So that is only tea. Then one slice of bread is 80 and there are four. So four times eight is? 320. It's 320. Four times 80. Times 80, yes. Yes, three, so three yeah, 320. So 320 plus 115. My mathematics teacher is very happy. Yeah, yeah. So that is 435. Yes. And then we use two teaspoons of peanut butter or butter. That is one is 45, two of them is 90. 90. So plus 90. 525. 525. So what I mean, the four slices of bread will be equivalent to a fish size ndoma, will be equivalent to a fish size sweet potato, will be equivalent to either a cup of any starch, either rice or a one full maize. And fish size of ugali? The same. Yeah. The same is roughly that calories. So if I want to take tea with that, because someone will ask me, what if I'm not taking bread, I want mm. to do ma. So roughly a fish size or a cup of any starch mm. will be roughly one, 160, mm. 160 calories, okay? But now, uh, if you want the 320, you can go to maybe one and a half cup, okay? That's okay. So we are at 525 for breakfast. Mm. So if we add a fruit, it's around 60 calories, okay? So we are at 585. Mm -hmm. So let's say a snack, at, that one is breakfast is done. Mm -hmm. So your breakfast is already done 585. Yeah, so we have four slices of bread, a cup of tea. Yeah. Let's say you want an egg, mm. a, f a, a bread, an egg, and a fruit, because uh, the only way of increasing weight with that is increasing your calories. Okay. So we have to try as much as we can to take more of the healthy food to increase our calories. So an egg will be like, uh, again, 80 calories. That is 65. Mm -hmm. So then egg, uh, a sausage, but less control. 
so that uh, when we control, we don't take more of the unhealthy one. Yes. That's already 600 calories for breakfast. That's breakfast. And, then, you, and you need around 1,800. 1,800. So 600 for breakfast, either snack is 80, which is a fruit, can be 80, or a glass of milk again, a glass of yogurt, a cup of uji is about 80 to 120, okay? Let's give an average of 120. That one will be at around, um, let's say 800 calories. Mm. Then we have lunch now. So lunch, a fisa is ugali or a cup of rice or a cup of any starch is again around uh, one, 160 calories. So uh, 160 for any uh, starch, uh, be it chapati or, and, or, or whatsoever starch, eh? yes. that's 160. And then protein, either two or three serving spoon plant protein, which is beans, uh, dengue and all that, will be 150. Or let's say a drumstick chicken or two of them will be 150 or a palm-sized fish will be 150 calories. Mm -hmm. So we are at 1,000, okay? Mm -hmm. And then that is we have added protein and starch, okay? Mm -hmm. And vegetable, uh, for people who want to lose weight, to gain weight, we tell them not to take more of the vegetables. Yes. If you want to use, gain, lose weight, take more of the vegetables. Okay. But if you want to gain weight, do not take more of the vegetables because they have fiber, which will slow the, the digestion mm -hmm. of the food, and then you won't tend to feel at the edge of eating. So maybe one or two serving spoon, and a serving spoon of vegetable is 25 calories, so that is 50. Right. So then apart from that, and supper. Mm -hmm. So 160 plus 150 is 310, mm -hmm. plus 50 is uh, 360. So if we do the same for supper, 360, we are around 1,500 calories. Okay. Plus a snack in the evening, which will give us another 80, mm -hmm. we are around 380. Okay. So what is an ideal snack now after you've had that? An ideal yes. snack as mm -hmm. you go to... Yes. So mostly an ideal snack, like we say, someone who is underweight, we tend to advise you, you must. You should not avoid any meal. You must take three main meals, that is breakfast, lunch, and supper. Then you must have two or three snacks, either at 10, at 4 p.m., and before bedtime. So what is an ideal snack? A snack is something you just tend to fill your stomach in a way. It's not a main meal. So it can be in the form of a bowl of fruit salad or a medium fruit like an apple, a slice of melon, a slice of purple or an orange. It can be in form of a glass of milk, a glass of yogurt. It can be in form of, 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 of a cup of wood or a cup of tea or it can be form of some cereal, healthy cereals and, and, and some fruits in them. Mm -hmm. That is just an ideal snack for you. Mm -hmm. But not now you want to tell me you snack with biscuits. Mm -hmm. You don't you want tell me you want to snack with sodas mm -hmm. because that will also have a, a, a negative health implication to you. Mm -hmm. So even if you want snacking, take more of the healthy feeds, mm -hmm. which is very important for mm -hmm. you. And if you don't do that, now you don't gain weight periodically, then you come to to complication. Mm -hmm. So then we'll put you on a diet after calculating the calorie you want individually right. because weight is different individually right. and the way you eat is different. Right. So and it, uh, it requires an individual diet plan. This was just an example of what calorie comes. But, but yes. the, the, the diet plan and you'll tell us how then it, yes. it, you'll tell us how it's worked out and yes, how yes. you do it. Yes. So, but, but this is just a sample. This is a sample. So we have an individual diet plan depending on the complications that you have, either cancer, hypertension, or eye heart disease, or immune, immunocompressing disease, or appetite issues. So it, it is individualized according to your weight, eating pattern, and everything. Okay. So if you don't adhere to that, and we say at least when you're giving your weight gain product uh, plan, at least gain two to four kg in a month. That's the healthy way. That is the healthy way. So that we check every month have you gained, then we can adjust your diet slowly by slowly as you progress. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not used to eating, we can't just bombard you with like, too much food at once. You'll not be able to eat it. Mm -hmm. So we'll add you on top progressively. Yes. But now if you fail to gain now, the complication also with, with, with uh, not having, being the correct weight. All right, so we want to take some questions here, and you're also welcome to send in uh, some of your questions. Today we're asking, what are your questions, what, are you, what questions rather do you have around being underweight? What questions do you have around being underweight? That's the question that we're asking you today, because we want to find out what who are hawangelele sana, this particular aspect. But again, every time that people are doing their work, and I see it even on people's pages, auto men up the gym, or not to attack lose weight, but people are going to underweight. And uh, Felix has explained what it means and uh, in terms of BMI and what needs to be done. So if you have any questions, the SMS line is 22422. <laughs> the hashtag is still Kenya's Choice. Very good. Kenya's Choice 2022. <laughs>
I know, Norma. But do text us and uh, we will check, even if it's on Twitter, we'll check uh, for that as well. Let's take a look at some of the questions that you're already asking uh, on SMS. And uh, there it is. This is uh, Shady from Kiambu. How can I gain weight fast? Is apetamine syrup safe to add weight? Now, how can I gain weight fast? The first thing you have said is having one sufficient calories to supply your system. Then of that sufficient will just make you maintain weight so that you don't reduce. But now you need an extra energy now to help you gain weight. So when diet alone fails, now remember it's not diet alone, because when you're underweight, you don't have uh, muscle composition is not complete. So you also need to build up muscles. And the way to build up muscles, apart from protein, you also need some exercise. Now, where people go wrong, you want to gain weight, you go to the gym, and you go to the, the aerobic. Mm. You see? Aerobic help in burning fat. Mm. So you want to gain weight, you'll be going there and struggle. Mm. So if you, don't want, if you want to gain weight and you go to the gym, do not go to aerobic classes. Uh, or even if you to want to go is once a week, just, let, just to, to keep your system uh, active. But the best thing, go for weightlifting because they tend to build up the muscles. So leave the aerobic, the Zumba, because they'll burn more fat. So go to weightlifting, and that's why when you want to lose weight and you go to weightlifting again, you don't lose. You're building muscles. So you go there to the gym and you're not losing. The same, if you want to gain, you don't go to aerobics or cardio, but you go to weightlifting. Now, lycoptamine is, is, is one of the, 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 the supplements that we have. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are points, apart from appetizers, that we give a protein and caloric rich supplement, which aptamine is one of them, and several others. So what they have is that the, the protein is made in a way that it's easy for your body to digest it and absorb it. And they are made by, with more of the whey protein Protein because whey is one of the protein that is easy to absorb and digest. And apart from that, different vitamins that help in uh, metabolic rate uh, tend to control metabolic rate or tend also to help in your energy uptake are also added in these supplements. And then the protein content is a bit higher composed in a way that is a bit higher than what we find in food. Yes, this supplement will help you gain weight fast. Okay, and that's why uh, if you come to see me where I work sometimes in Buruburu, we have, uh, these are supplements that are given by uh, the Ministry of Health to these uh, people who are less fortunate to buy supplements such as Aptamin, or are also gi they're given by UNICEF and some other world organizations to turn people gain weight despite they are not get able to get nutrients. And they are called ready to use therapeutic feeds, mm -hmm. which you either put in your porridge or you can take that way. They're also made in porridge form, in a peanut paste form mm -hmm. that help you gain weight. So you can see me and I'll give you this. Mm -hmm. So they're not normally sold. They're given free of charge. Mm -hmm. Maybe a consultation is what you'll be charged on. Charged for you. Yes, then we monitor you as you go on. Mm -hmm. But if you have money to buy, we can also prescribe for you supplements such as Aptamin and all that so that you gain weight mm -hmm fast as possible. But, but the, just back to that question, yes. the way it started. Yes. How can I gain weight fast? Yes. Is that a right approach to it? It's not a right approach to it because you can't gain weight fast. Mm. You know, if, 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 if I am 45, like I said, example, and uh, my ideal weight is, let's say, 70, and I want to gain 70 in two months, that means I'll take a lot of excessive food or supplements and all that to gain that weight. And in that scenario, I can still alter my hormones, such as insulin, and become diabetes. Mm -hmm. I can still overwork my kidneys by too much protein uptake and affect it. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, I can still accumulate so much fat, yes, I've gained weight, and affect my cholesterol. So what I tell people, every first, uh, first uh, I will say, first procedure mm -hmm. for a health, health issue like weight and all that, mm -hmm. I will say it's not always very right, because there are health implications. Yes, there are those who will gain fast and don't, they don't have issues. Mm -hmm. But you can't say if I gain fast, the other one can gain fast and I'll also not have an issue. People mm -hmm. are different. Right. So uh, periodically, slowly by slowly, and we said four to, to three to four is okay, but in an uttermost, mm -hmm. six kg a month. Mm -hmm. So that fast, only if you are on right procedure, mm -hmm and you're giving, being given the right nutrition and a healthy one, then if you get it fast and we say, okay, maybe it's your body recepting uh, faster than normal. Right, but even if it's doing that, you can regulate. Yes, the regulation. The, the monthly checkup. Yes, the monthly checkup is important. Okay. Yes. All right, let's take a look at the next uh, question here. This is Tergech 
from Eldoret, what about someone who eats to his maximum? Mm -hmm. Instead of getting full and satisfied, he feels nausea. So, hula, um, unaskia mm -hmm. satiated, ume, ume mm -hmm. shiba, mm -hmm. but unaskia nausea. So, so, so that question, uh, this person eats to their maximum, but they get full and satisfied and they feel nausea. And that comes in, you want to gain weight, but you now you, you instead of eating just a, a sufficient plate that is enough for you, mm. like we were doing the calories, mm. the normal uh, breakfast was to give us 600 calories right. to 700 is the highest. Mm. And you see how, how big that portion was. There was a cup of tea, there was a starch, there was a fruit, there was a protein in form of either egg or in form of sausage, not more than three times a day, beef or chicken. Mm. There is a protein in the form of either beans, you can still do beans and dengue for breakfast, mm. you see, the, uh, such, and it's still whole. But now you take too much. You see, when you take too much, the pressure exerted to the abdomen right. is so high. Mm. And this pressure will go and cause uh, up, upward flow back mm. of food. And too much excessive eating also causes, uh, uh, apart from age and genetics and all that, can weaken the upper opening of, the, of, your, of your tummy called the sphincter. And now you have a reflux, upward flow of juices of food upward because the part of the closing that food enters the stomach and opens up uh, is weakened. So you can have a reflux disease which is, can be caused by chronic vomiting and nausea. Mm -hmm. So the only way to prevent nausea is eat a portion that is required for you. And there is no way if you are not a nutritionist, you will know this is enough portion for me. Right. And that's why you still have to see a nutritionist. So you don't just overeat to gain weight and you are still not eating the right portion or the right type of food. Mm -hmm. So the best way of preventing nausea if you have one, prevent overeating. So just eat what is just enough and prevent food that causes nausea, such as sugary food, fatty foods, and all that. And if it's too much, we can give you medication for nausea, such as nausea and all that. To prevent that nausea and that feeling of vomiting, also medication, you can see our, our clinicians or doctors. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So let's take a look at another one, uh, another question as well. And this is what mm -hmm. you're, you're asking. Tom Omino from Kisumu says, good morning. My weight is 72 kgs. Yes. My height is 5'7". <laughs> oh, yeah, he, I think he joined in a little bit late. Yes, it's okay. What is my BMI? How do you calculate? So we shall insert his parameters. I think those are the right ones, right? That's what's needed. Yes. But we need to change the 5.7 to... To, to... to meters, eh? Okay. Let me just try something. Let me... So, so it is 5.7. Times 0 0.3. Okay, to go papa if he, Yes. Hey, so look, you multiply yeah, your height in feet. 5.7 times 0 0.3. 0 0.3. We'll get 1.71. 1. 1. Yes, 1.71. Yes. So if you want to know whether it's overweight or a base, now we square it. Mm -hmm. So it's 1.71 times 1.71. We get 2.9. Yes. So we say BMI is uh, current weight, which is 72 kgs, over height in meters squared, which is, has become 2.9. 2.9. So 72 divided by 2.9 becomes 24. Mm -hmm. And a normal BMI is 18.5 to 24.9. So currently, uh, uh, Mr. Tom, you are at 24.8. And a normal BMI is 18.5 to 24.9. So you are still normal, so <laughs> but you are slightly becoming overweight. So you should start watching your diet so that you don't gain too much to, right. to be overweight. Yeah, so it's yes. actually, you are still within the normal range. parameters, yes. Uh, yes. Mr. Mr. Tom. Maduko yeah. ukusawa, lakini sasa inabidi u. What just yes, yes. So yes. see what will happen. Yes, yes. Uh, in that, I don't know. Do we have uh, others? Yes, yes. I can ask a question. Yes. All right, mm. let's take a look at another one. Sorry. Mm. Uh, Eric is saying, <laughs> 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 taking alcohol, mm. can it lead to being underweight? underweight? Actually, alcohol is one of the very confusing factors. Mm. Remember the last time when I came here, I told you when you take alcohol, you can become obese or overweight. Yes. And this is due to extra calories. Yes, in but, alcohol. Yes, in the alcohol. Right. But even alcohol, again, can make you become underweight. Mm. So how can it make you become underweight? Mr. Eric, alcohol can make you become underweight in this scenario. And not only alcohol, uh, drug abuse, so, mm. such as people who take Mogoka, mm. Mirao, and all that. You mm. see, when they take Mirao or Mogoka, they tend to lose that appetite to feed. Mm. Similarly, too much alcohol can tend to make you lose appetite. And when you lose appetite, what will happen is you won't eat enough calories, okay? So when you don't eat enough calories, you'll tend to be underweight. But apart from that, alcohol tend to interfere with our digestive tract. 
that's why it can lead to ulcers, okay? Mm. It can interfere with vitamin absorption, mm. such as vitamin B12 mm. and all that, okay? Mm. And this can cause you to a certain cause of anemia mm -hmm. or lack of vitamin either iron or vitamin B12. So yes, alcohol can lead to underweight, mm -hmm. but it depends how you take your alcohol, either you take your alcohol and you don't feed. Mm -hmm. So if you take alcohol and you feed too much again, you again become obese. So it depends how you take your alcohol with yeah. food. Yeah. Yes. So it's also about the moderation. E not much of the moderation in underweight. Oh, in underweight. In underweight is much of taking alcohol and not eating. Ah, that's what causes. Yes. So, but the, but in in the other, you hear people say things like what are tukunyo no it's idea digestion. Digestion. So what happens <laughs> is alcohol normally produces a lot of heat in the stomach or in this our system. So this heat, and that's why you see people like those who are tend to say that when I do the gene and all that, it will tend to help me lose weight. Okay. And reason is you take an alcohol that has low calorie content. Yes it will help you lose weight because it's not leading to much fat accumulation. But apart from that, it helps increase your metabolism or usage of energy. And in that way, it will burn fat. So that tells you when you are underweight and you still indulge in alcohol, the higher chances you'll be more underweight because of the metabolism and uh, uh, affecting the appetite and all that, yes. Mm. Yeah. All right, somebody's asking a question now about a baby. But before I ask the mm. question, a uh, big shout out to uh, Musakali Juma, mm -hmm. who is my, uh, who was my lecturer, but mm -hmm. is still my mm -hmm. teacher in life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shout out to you, mm -hmm. good sir, Musakali Juma. Mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> 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 I hope I said the right thing. <laughs> but anyway, mm -hmm. Let's, this is a question about a baby and the weight. You mentioned it that mm -hmm. sometimes babies mm -hmm. can be born mm -hmm. underweight. Mm -hmm. Someone says, hello, how can you know if a baby is underweight? I have a three-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. What should I do? Okay, now, now what happens is babies can be born underweight and had underweight issues, as we have said, they can start far away as genetics. And remember for a child to have that gene, it starts when the mother is pregnant. So for a baby, what is considered underweight? Yes, I'll come there. Okay. So what happens is this is a three-year-old baby. When a mother who is pregnant, you are underweight, let's say before pregnancy. For the mother? The, the mother. Okay. Start working on weight gain before you conceive or before you get pregnant. And when so you are if pregnant, then you do your BMI and already are below 18. Yes, you should start. Yes, taking and the and, and and for mothers who are BMI below 18, a normal pregnancy is 37 to 40 week. Okay, let's say 38 to 40 weeks. Mm. So anyone with BMI below 18, it means during your pregnancy period, you should gain like 14 to 16 kg more than the weight you have. Oh. So if I'm, I'm I'm 45 before I get pregnant, it means I should gain roughly 18. So that I, by the time I'm, 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 I'm delivering, I should be around uh, 60 something kgs. So meaning you should gain around uh, 1.5 to 2 kg per month of your visit to the clinic if you are underweight. Mm. But if you are normal weight, you should gain roughly seven to around uh, uh, 11, 12.5 kg. So that is 700 grams per month of weight gain to, to one kg weight gain. But if you're obese, you should gain roughly 600 to 700 grams okay. per month of your weight gain. So if you are pregnant and you are losing weight, and losing weight due to the fact that you're pregnant can be due to nausea and vomiting or underfeeding. So it means that when you're not gaining weight appropriately when you're pregnant, I'm building up to the question, no the, the baby requires nutrients from your system. So the baby will also through the placenta, and remember these nutrients are passed through, pass through your blood to the placenta to the baby. The baby will not get enough nutrients. And these nutrients is what help in different organs to form, different cells to multiply. So what will happen, these organs won't form as required, and higher chances of giving birth to a baby, a preterm baby, a baby born before 37 weeks, mm -hmm. or leading to underweight baby, a baby who is underweight. Mm -hmm. And underweight can be due to either lack of enough nutrients for weight gain during pregnancy, or lack on, of enough iron, which still come from protein-rich food like beef, chicken, fish, beans, and all that when you're pregnant. So once the baby is underweight, when they're born, and the weight is not pro pro corrected, and that's why preterm babies, we don't give them a normal formula if they're using formula. Mostly we start them on formula because when they suck breast milk, they will also tend to use more energy, or we can uh, spoon feed them, mm -hmm. cow feed them, syringe feed them, or tube feed them. So we give them a preterm formula or milk products or uh, we can add some, uh, uh, we call them breast milk fortifier. Mm -hmm. We fortify breast milk with more nutrients so that the baby gets enough to gain weight. Mm -hmm. So 
And that's why we talk for children, we talk of the first 1,000 days, from zero to one year. Mm. So if the baby doesn't get, uh, grow properly or gain enough weight from zero to two years, we lead to a point we call failure to grow. So in, when the baby fails to grow, the, you, you become, how do we call it, uh, stunted. Mm. They don't grow in the right, brain function is low, IQ is low. So that baby is three years. A child between uh, uh, one year to three years, how do we calculate the, age, the weight they should be? It is eight in bracket, eight plus, bracket two times age. So eight what? What plus, <laughs> bracket two times age is eight plus, bracket two times three. So two times three is six. Right. Six plus three is 14. So this baby who is three years should be 14 to roughly 16 kgs. Mm. So if that baby falls at 12, then that baby is under it. What we should we do? Bring this baby we see, mm -hmm. we see, we check what's the cause. Is the iron levels low? Is the baby not feeding enough? Because you might be also be giving maybe starch, vegetable, na soup, ya mm -hmm. The baby is not getting enough protein. So those are the factors we'll check, mm -hmm. and we tend to help this baby gain weight. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's a who's and come here, come look one of them. We may share zero point zero one percent. One of us have a kuna eight plus. Eight plus minus bracket. Apo na unafikiria board mass. Board mass. Yes. Anyway, all right. Let's take a look at uh, this next question here. Someone says, in case of cerebral, cerebral palsy kid who is underweight, what are some of the measures to take in order to make her gain weight? Okay, uh, children with cerebral palsy normally have issues with feeding, and this is due to the brain, uh, 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 the, the, the effects of the cerebral palsy on the brain and all that, okay? Because the brain controls different hormones in the body and also controls appetite, so they don't tend to feed well. Chewing nerve function is impaired. So their type of meal is different from a normal child because we have to give them something easy to chew and swallow. Mm. And then we have to try as much as we can We give them enough protein for them to gain enough muscles and get enough nutrients. Mm. So we'll check which proteins are good for them. And in some areas, we can also give them the supplements for children, mm. which are more in calorie to gain weight. Mm. So we'll check their feeding, what are they, uh, we check their feeding patterns, mm. when are they feeding better, which foods do they like. Mm. So we'll ask the mother that way. And then we might try uh, doing some, some just, just a follow-up to check what do they like most. So most of the protein-rich food and something easier to chew and swallow depending on the problem that they have. Mm -hmm. So generally, this is a child we have to see because they are also individualized, mm -hmm. yes. All right, so you have to come in and also yes. get, uh, but that is a, a general level. Yes. For, for deeper, mm -hmm. you have to kind of come in and get some... Uh, you know, consultation and, and get to know what exactly is happening. Because I remember uh, one of the things that Felix said is over and above mm. the general measures that you need to take, it is all down to an individual. Mm -hmm. Because you'll have to find, you'll have to be asked some questions, is it genetics, mm -hmm. is it a disease? And then uh, it becomes a little bit different. Let's take a look at uh, another question here. There are some of us who do not eat a lot, yet we do not lose weight at all. Mm. So, Willis, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> okay. So, so we have, we have, we have like, uh, uh, yes, yes, we have some people. Let's say uh, my brothers, let's say from uh, the Westland, uh, of no, the Western mm -hmm. region. Okay, mm -hmm. I come from the Western region. Mm -hmm. So, some of my brothers, you see, for them to eat, you see, that a lot depends on what is allowed to you. Yes. I can have Ugali this side, and that is still small for me. Yes. Okay. A lot is relative. Yes, yes. You remember <laughs> that guy, how do we call it? The Ugali, Ugali man. man. The Ugali man. Yes. His portion of Ugali, Willis, you can't finish. Yes. But that is still small for him, you see. Yes. So, for you, what is a lot? You might be eating a lot, but it's not sufficient. Okay. Because you haven't calculated. Yes, yes, yes. For you, it's, it's a lot, but it's small for you, it's, uh, whatever you're required to do. So, it's only the nutrition is or your health professional can tell you there's a lot or not. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, we have said there are factors that can make you know, gain weight despite mm -hmm. you're eating a lot. Mm -hmm. And we talk of hormonal factors such as hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. indigestion issues, or you're eating a lot but not the right one. Or apart from that, you're eating a lot but the wrong time mm -hmm. of you eating a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you eat a lot in the, in, at night, 
and then you and and then and then during the day you don't eat mm -hmm. what will happen is you'll gain weight because it's a wrong time your body is not going to use that energy mm -hmm. but what about like we say breakfast as a king you take breakfast as a king mm -hmm. and don't tend to eat during the day mm -hmm. you remember that that calorie will only take you for sufficient hours maybe six to eight hours then the rest of the time you won't have something in your system so yes you have eaten a lot in the morning but during the day your body lacks that and have you realized when you eat a lot you tend to get angry so fast mm. because when you eat a lot at once mm -hmm. The digestion is faster, metabolic rate is faster, mm -hmm. and this the, the wash away will also be higher, mm -hmm. and you might not have, you might have issues with weight 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 in general. Yeah, it's true because as you know, especially if you come and talk a wedding, mm -hmm. talk a wedding, pale weekend, ume finya, le ibrakitita na yes 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 ume finya. I love when I want to understand ya. But anyway, let's take a look at the next question. So mm -hmm. Somebody's asking, uh, this is Anne, and you want yes, to yes. see, mm -hmm. hello, I'm pregnant. My weight is 42 mm -hmm. in my first, uh, that is an natural checkup, right? Yes. I, I hope that's what that means. And mm -hmm. see, how can I gain a healthy weight? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 Anne, this is a very good question. And in this question, when you're pregnant, the most important thing is going for your gyna clinic. Mm -hmm. So for gyna clinic, actually, I attend to mothers. So in gyna clinic, we work hand in hand with the gyna. Okay. For our clinic, for gyna clinic, there must be a nurse, there must be a nutritionist, there must be a gyna consultant, right. and uh, we also have to have radiology. Mm -hmm. So we have our clinic in Buruburu for gyna on, 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 on Tuesday and on Thursday, which, uh, and then should jam all about on Mondays, okay? And then main hostel, we have gynas every day. Mm -hmm. So for gyna clinics, the nutrition will come in whereby you'll be weighed. So if you are 42, we'll tend to know according to your height, mm -hmm. Uh, is it normal for you? Because we have to determine what is that 42 according to your height. And if you are 42 today, how much were you last month? Mm -hmm. So if you are 45 and you are reduced to 42, or you are 42 and you maintain 42 for two, three months, mm -hmm. then there is a problem. So we start asking what is the problem? Is it nausea and vomiting, which is common during the first trimester for mothers due to that uh, exceeding pressure of the baby uh, to the tummy? Mm -hmm. So we might address that, but for you now, we might put you on supplements for weight gain. If necessary, you are so much underweight, closer to severe. Mm -hmm. But if not, we'll just tend to uh, uh, check on your diet so that we give you healthy meal. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing, how can you do it? Starch has to be in pro mm -hmm. proportion. You have to take, when you say three main meals, you have to take Two, two or three snacks. So we talk of what is a snack. It can be a glass of milk. You can take, now if you are pregnant, we tend to advise you take at least one or two glasses of milk in a day for calcium, for bones and everything. So must you have two glasses of milk or yogurt in a day. If you are lactose intolerance, we'll give you a probiotic, a good bacteria that tend to control lactose intolerance. Lactose intolerance is whereby you are not able to digest the energy in milk, okay? So we can give you something to help in that or take other rich foods rich in calcium, fish, eggs, and all that, but not more than two eggs or three eggs in a week. Then apart from that, I balance that for lunch, whereby each of your meals should have a protein, mm -hmm. either in terms of fish, in terms of chicken, in terms of beans, and all that. Mm -hmm. But for you to gain more muscle, the proteins that are easy to digest, animal proteins are better. So at least three times of that, either three or four times of fish, two or two times of beef, or uh, one time, one time of liver. So beef uh, portions could should can be roughly about eight to twelve thumb size pieces. Okay, that is beef or liver. Fish can be a palm size or a half a fish and all that. Chicken can be a drumstick, two drumstick for you or two breast size. Okay, mm -hmm. if you are doing the plant protein for Anne, you can do like two or three serving spoons of plant protein, and then the others come in. So it's just increasing that, but it's something that we can tell and make for you. Yes. All right. Now I know we had some. Other questions, I don't know if we still take them or time in Mekua and buy. We do, all right. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, family planning, Pia Huayin, Asababisha, underweight. Question one. Question two, mm -hmm. um, what foods are best to control weight gain in an adult with yo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, do, do shem, do, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's muscular, mm -hmm. dystrophy, hold on, hold on, hold on, might fail. Muscular dystrophy. Uh, so uh, let's start with this one because I think it's a bit... And then does pepper, pili pili, he, does pepper help in weight loss? Okay. So I guess so, we'll so, start so, with those. So, so uh, 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 any muscle uh, condition, eh? one, the muscles require energy. So if you have a muscle condition, then one, you should work up in order to build up muscles. So building up muscles require protein-rich food. So the animal protein plus the plant protein. 
That is one. To prevent muscle breakdown, you require energy. So just a normal balance diet. But there are nutrients that help in function of the muscles. And all of them are food rich in folic acid. Mm -hmm. Folic acid help in blood composition, formation, and also mm -hmm. that is vitamin B9 from green leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. And also function of muscles. Mm -hmm. So things like that. And then amino acids, we can give you, if the condition is worse, was, then there are B-complex vitamins, vitamins with B1, B6, B12, and these are the medications normally given to people with muscles. Mm -hmm. Things like Neuro40, Neurorobin, and all that, okay? They have B-complex vitamins that will give you, and also tell to, uh, tend to advise you take food rich in B-complex vitamin. Mm -hmm. So, and a variety of them, depending on how you're feeling, if it's muscles with bone issues, mm -hmm. will also tend to advise you take calcium-rich food, vitamin D-rich food, such as fish and all that. Mm -hmm. So generally, if you take a fish, let's like say three times a week, mm -hmm which is rich in omega-3 fatty acids to prevent inflammation of cells or muscles, that will help you for the muscles because fish has several B vitamins. So when you take a balance that and some of few amino acids that will prescribe for you will help you in that muscle issue. Mm. Now the other question was... Um, pili pili. Pili, 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 pili pili and weight loss. Actually, pili pili really, uh, this equation can pili pili or indeed move for weight loss. Mm. They don't really make you lose weight, but the only other thing that they tend to do, they help in digestion, and apart from that, they increase your metabolic rate. Mm. So they cannot maybe lead you to underweight, but they can help you lose fat. So there is losing fat and underweight is different things. Mm. Okay? So apart from that, the other question was about. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do we remember it? It was. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, we're to number one yes. time. It may, it may, it may but tell them where they can find you. Okay. And so that is a good question. Can breastfeeding lead to underweight? Yes. If you're not having breastfeeding, and uh, breastfeeding pattern, and that's why babies we say breastfeed them at least interval of every three hours. Mm -hmm. Even if they are asleep during the daytime, wake them up because a child who is uh, from zero to around six months require about eight feeds of breast milk. So three times, let's say that is around eight times after every three hours. So enough breast milk, enough positioning, and enough diet. So where can you find me? You can find me at Mata Hostel. And at Mata Hostel now, uh, at let's say Buruburu, we are normally even having physiotherapy for people who have weight issues, because weight issues have issues with the bones, mm. osteoporosis. Mm. They have issues with fertility mm. as women. They have issues with indigestion and all that. So uh, we have a physiotherapy running every Tuesday and Friday. And in main hospital, you can also get me sometimes on Friday. I'll be able to assist you and we'll run different tests to determine mm. what is causing you under it. So you can get me at Mata Hostel. You can check their portal for my number for the number of the hostel at the MATA website. You will call and ask for Felix Nutritionist. But we also have nutritionists all over these clinics who will be able to assist you with the doctor's support. Mm -hmm. Or Willie you still can link you with me. Yeah. Or you can get me at Felix Nutritionist Kenya or uh, Felix Okoth Nutritionist on in Instagram and on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to get me. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you. We hope that you've got a little bit of something with this uh, topic that is rarely discussed, and yet it also represents a, a, a significant group of people. I hope you've watched it. If you're just catching it towards the tail end, mm -hmm. make sure you go over on YouTube and check it out. It's, it's going to be there. You can even go now and just rewind the slide, and you'll be able to watch what we've been talking about, or you can catch later on mm -hmm. when the digital team has put it out there. Make sure you do reach out to Felix if you can't. Like you said, you can reach out to me, reach out to him mm -hmm. uh, to ask the questions, go get uh, checked. And uh, one of the things I'm saying, I remember, everybody needs a sort of individual plan. Ukisikia ya jirani is yet in apply kwako based on your condition, your genetics, etc. So, Willis, I know we are out of time, but just one interesting thing I've seen, mm -hmm. family planning affect Oh yes, weight. that was the other question. So yes, it can affect weight, either make you gain weight or lose weight due to hormonal changes. And that's why at Mata Oswald, we have natural family planning mm -hmm. that will be taken through the procedure and get to know which doesn't affect your hormone in a way. So you can come and we see on that and you get to know that. Right, yes, I think I've answered. Yes, yeah, people ask a lot about family planning and weight gain mm -hmm. and weight loss. Hi, Basi. Tuonane Kesh. But willing, remember, successful people look like you and God loves you and that will never change. Mm -hmm. Peace and love. Mm -hmm. Tuonane. <laughs>